Ichthyotitan is the perfect name for a 25 meter monster of an ichthyosaur. In 2018, a team of scientists published an analysis of enormous jawbones from the late Triassic of the United Kingdom. The Lilstock monster specimen was found by Paul de la Salle, and is now one of the specimens assigned to the new genus Ichthyotitan severnensis. The Ichthyotitan holotype is another more complete serangular that gives us more clues about the enormous animal's life and body size. The oust cliff material found decades earlier had been mistaken for dinosaur limb bones due to its enormous size. The 2018 paper argued that these huge fragments both belonged to Shostasaurid ichthyosaurs, which were the largest marine reptiles known. Two new studies expand our knowledge of these animals, confirming the ichthyosaur diagnosis and discovering that none of these whale-sized creatures were fully grown. Let's take a quick look at the specimens. Ichthyotitan is known from two specimens, the Lilstock monster and the blue anchor serangular, both of which are established at around 25 meters in this new study from Dean Lomax and his team. Ribs, vertebrae, and a phalanx were also found nearby but cannot be assigned to the same taxon, but are stated as being additional evidence for more huge ichthyosaurs in the area. The new paper clarifies further with better material available. Just the blue anchor serangular, the jaw material and holotype for ichthyotitan, would have been longer than 2 meters. That's a fragment of an animal's jaw, and it's already over 6 feet long. Bivalves were found on the blue anchor specimen as well as scavenging traces. It was curved posteriorly, something that had been seen in the Lilstock specimen and confirmed to be natural with this one, instead of a suspected taphonomic defect. It's morphologically most similar to Shonosaurus and Shostosaurus, and has massive muscle attachment scars just like Lilstock, indicating that Ichthyotitan had extraordinarily powerful jaws. Scaling from Pisanosaurus and Ophthalmosaurus, which were ichthyosaurs with preserved serangulars that were more easily comparable, arrives at an updated body length of 25 meters for Ichthyotitan. The oust material is from a different locality, is slightly older, and is massively larger, at least 30% larger, and as high as 50% larger than Lilstock. When comparing the serangulars directly, it seems that oust is quite a bit larger than Lilstock, which is slightly bigger than the blue anchor specimen. Size estimates based on this new information give us some real sea monsters. If both specimens of Ichthyotitan are approximately 25 meters, scaling from Darius Now's GDI of the Grey Sile Shostosaurus gets about 99 tons, although it's worth noting that the paleo art reconstruction that accompanied the paper was considerably more robust. We'll go with Shostosaurus scaling to be more conservative. The Aust Colossus material is at least 30% larger than the Lilstock specimen of Ichthyotitan, giving a minimum of 32.5 meters in total length. It may be up to 50% larger, however, which would translate to 37.5 meters. A colossus indeed, even on the low end. What about mass? Shostasaurid ichthyosaurs have a variety of body shapes, from the paper-thin Basanosaurus to the rotund Shonosaurus. A 2019 analysis created 3D models of various ichthyosaurs directly based on the fossils, and a 2021 study led by ichthyosaur expert P. Martin Sander used them to generate mass estimates. The corpulent Shonosaurus weighed 21 tons at 13.5 meters. Its unusually deep ribcage made it the most robust of any known ichthyosaur. A more typical Shostasaurid body plan is represented by Guizhou Ichthyosaurus, a medium-sized macro predator from China known to gobble up animals three quarters its own size. Guizhou weighed 1400 kilograms at 6 meters, a much more slender build. Both taxa were formidable hunters, however, as evidenced by Shoni's laterally compressed cutting teeth. Shostasaurus sicaniensis is another giant Shostasaurid, closer in build to Guizhou than Shonosaurus. I'm sure you can see why scaling from fragments is difficult. So much depends on the related animal that you choose to scale from, and that can have cascading effects. Researcher Darius Now, who studied under Martin Sander, used a rough volumetric estimation and found Shostasaurus to have a volume of 39.9 cubic meters at 18.6 meters of body length, which is a common length estimate for the holotype. That would make it slightly less robust than Guizhou Ichthyosaurus at the same length, which would have a volume of 41 cubic meters at 18.6 meters long. The most recent specific gravity estimates for ichthyosaurs indicate that they weighed 1.025 kilograms per liter, so actual masses would be higher. One thing is clear. Shonosaurus, with its massive torso, is an outlier. Basonosaurus, Guizhou Ichthyosaurus, and Shostasaurus are much more conservative taxa to use for scaling the British giants. To not talk your ear off with math, I'll put the various size ranges on the screen before we dive into the new information. This comes with a heavy disclaimer. We're scaling from jaw fragments here, and although it would go against the Shostasaurid body plan, it's possible that they were bobblehead animals. That's highly unlikely, based on the morphology of their relatives, but it's worth mentioning. And as it turns out, neither ichthyotitan specimens were done growing when they died, nor was oust. 
Both Lomax's team and another 2024 study done on the bones themselves looked at their unique tissue structure on a microscopic level. Berrio and Sander 2024 performed an incredibly detailed histological analysis on the lil stock and oust material, comparing them to other giant ichthyosaur jaws like Shostosaurus, and supported the hypothesis that they belonged to enormous ichthyosaurs. Their study revealed that the jawbones had developed a special array of coarse collagen fibers that one author compared to carbon fiber. Check out this article from the University of Bonn. The unusual structure of their bone walls, which is similar to carbon fiber reinforced materials, probably kept the bone very stable while allowing for fast growth. These huge jaws would have been exposed to strong shearing forces even when the animal was eating normally, says Perillo. It is possible that these animals also used their snouts to ram into their prey, similar to the orcas of today. However, this is still pure speculation at this time. And here's the killer quote I promised at the beginning of the video. The presence of numerous open canals in the outer cortex and a well-vascularized outer periosteal surface indicates for all bones sampled that the animals were actively growing at the time of death. Interestingly, it's likely that the Lilstock monster was a younger animal than Aust. Whether or not Ichthyotitan would be the same size as Aust once fully grown is unknown. But Lomax's new paper supports the results and even clarifies that Ichthyotitan had not yet reached an asymptotic growth stage at 25 meters and had yet to significantly slow down its development. They wrote that the Lilstock and Bass specimens likely represented subadults or young adults, which leaves considerable room for body size increases, and again confirmed that Aust was also still growing when it died. We don't know what ecological role giants like this would have filled. Most large Shostosaurids like Himalayasaurus, Shonosaurus, and the Swiss Tyrant appear to have been active macro predators with high metabolisms. A 2017 study found that endothermy is more capable of sustaining macro predation at immense body masses and included ichthyosaurs within that group. Were the British Titans enormous hunters? Perhaps they were simply gigantic fish eaters swallowing entire shoals at a time with their strong and flexible jaws. Perhaps their ecosystem resembled the Miocene, where the largest animals found were the apex predators like Otodus megalodon and Liviaton. The idea of a 100 plus ton animal ramming into its prey or rivals is certainly evocative, but we just don't know for sure what these ichthyosaurs looked like. Hopefully we can find more information. As to how big they could have gotten if they were fully grown? Who knows? The ocean has always fascinated and terrified humanity with its mysteries. The probability that we've discovered the largest ichthyosaurs is essentially zero, given that we have three specimens we know weren't at full size. Perhaps an entire Oust Colossus growth series is out in a cliffside somewhere waiting to be discovered. Considering that even the lowest of the low estimates for the animal have it at over 100 tons, with a peak at over 300 tons, this gigantic ichthyosaur is a likely contender for an animal bigger than the blue whale. Maybe the adults were even bigger than the outdated maximum estimates for Parasitas that took over the internet last year. Not only that, but it's more probable that it was a macro predator than a filter feeder, given the complete lack of filter feeding adaptations identified in true ichthyosaurs and the low primary productivity of Triassic seas. Given what we know about the morphology of its relatives, and the adaptations for incredible strength in its bones, the idea of a carnivorous marine kaiju is becoming more and more plausible. It remains speculation, however, and is subject to change pending further research. Analysis of nitrogen and zinc isotopes of the giant ichthyosaur material may reveal their trophic level, which would answer our questions about where they were on the food chain. Thank you so much to Paul de la Salle for helping out with this video. If you're interested in exploring more about the prehistoric world, subscribe so we can continue to learn together. And thank you to my amazing channel members. Joining the channel unlocks loyalty badges and emojis, and the mega theropod leveling up gets you early access to videos. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.